All right, next segment. And this segment's brought to you by my friends at BubbleFast.com. Okay, funny story. I don't know. You guys, if you're friends of my mom over on Facebook, and she's Bobby Bushy, she, she made, <laughs> she had to make a cone thing for her doggy who was, who was working on a, an owie that he just wouldn't stop licking it. So she got really ingenious here. She took a, what did you take, Mom? It was a bubble fast uh, mailer of some sort, and you made a cone uh, thing for your dog's head. I'm bubble fast. You think outside the box here, guys. <laughs> Gotta love it. Gotta love it. Oh, again, I'm at that point, guys. Somebody remind me. I need to place my bubble fast order. Bubble fast order needs to go in this week. I'm almost out of, I'm almost out of, um, I'm, I'm foam wrap. Foam wrap. I need foam wrap. Uh, so <laughs> those of you who went to my art glass uh, webinar know that I use the, the one eighth inch one eighth inch thick. Ooh, that's hard to say. I use that first on all of my really breakable glass and porcelain items before I use bubble wrap. So and I get that from bubblefast.com. Also, use the code Danny, and you can only use that over on their website. So if you shop for the, from them on eBay, you don't get any extra discounts. Just on the website, on the website, you get to use the code Danny, get an extra 5% off, and save up your bubble bucks for future discounts. Also, any shipping questions, problems, go on over to their Facebook group, Shipping Tips and Tricks. There's a lot of hard sentences to say this week, guys. Wow. Bah. We'll get it. Okay, I had a couple scores. I am happy to say sales are picking up, and I know why, because I'm actually listing again. I am trying to get at least 10 listings a day up. So if you guys want to watch the stuff that I talk about, like in the next segment, if you, in this segment, duh, if you want to watch the stuff that I'm talking about and see if it's really selling, you know, see if I'm just blowing smoke, go on over, watch my, my listings, because it gets listed the week that I, I talk about it. I talk about it. It stays on my desk till it's listed, so you guys can actually see what's selling. Um, I sold a couple things this week. I think I talked about these last week because they were sitting on my desk. I sold these on auction format. Now, I will run auctions every single week. They drive traffic, so I pick some items that I can you know, kind of take a little bit of a hit on what I would ask for if I was going fixed price. So I have this. Uh, what I discovered was, I, okay, so first I picked it up and I bought it based on the fact that it was cobalt blue and gold, very striking, really good looking piece. It had a portrait. Anytime you have a plate or a vase or something that has one of those, and I'm looking at it over here, that's why I keep looking over here, one of those depicted um, item, you know, Either whether it be like a lady or a couple or a little scene. That's a portrait, either a portrait plate or a portrait vase. Uh, just so you have it, this is item number 36068894-3135. Uh, so this is a portrait vase, and it was tiny, guys. If this had been a big vase, it had gone for way more. But this was tiny. It was only, oh, yay high. I showed it last week, I think. Um, I picked it up for like eight or ten dollars at the most. I think it was eight. I'm pretty sure it was eight. Uh, I saw. I started the bidding at forty nine ninety five. I was fully expecting only to get one bid on this, which I did. So it sold for forty nine ninety five, and they paid the shipping. Um, so I'm I'm perfectly happy with that because it was a quick flip. I will take less money on an auction item knowing that it's going to be a quick flip. Quick, get my money back out of it and some kind of thing. So had I gone on and listed this at fixed price, if it hadn't sold at auction, I probably would have asked in more like the $79.95 range with free shipping. Okay, so that's one item I sold. Um, I also sold the Mount Washington vase that I showed you guys last week. Again, I picked this up at an estate sale up in Washington. I paid 30 bucks for it. And I started the auction at $99.95, and I got my one bid, fine, tripled my money. Really nice piece. I hated to see it go. Uh, Amberina Glass was made by a few different companies. And the cool thing about Mount Washington Amberina was they actually got sued over the use of the term Amberina back in the day. Uh, 
because there was a specific company that was producing Amberina. And I know you guys are going to ask me, and I'm having just like a total brain block right now, and I can't tell you who the company was. Uh, but so they got sued, and they had to change the name to Rose Amber. So they changed the name to Rose Amber. So if you ever get a piece of Mount Washington, uh, be sure you call it Rose Amber. I'm sure that's what got me the price on this. So $100 is, is what I sold it for an auction. If I was putting this on fixed price, it would have gone for $149.95 with free ship. So just so you know that. But stuff is selling. I'm shipping every day. Every day, guys. Every, every day. Let's see. I am going to, I'm going to, I'm going to do these dolls last. Just because they have to carry them over. So let me start with, oh, what's my desk? Okay. My desk is piled, guys. So last week at the auction, I bought a lot of five pieces all together. And I paid 50 bucks. And I got a couple of pieces that are like, eh. Okay, I got to move my little mascot over. He's got to sit someplace out. So there was one piece in the lot that I really, really wanted. It was this right here. This was my, my money maker. So a lot of times in a lot, there's going to be like one or two pieces that is really what I'm paying for. And I disregard the other pieces. Okay. So I knew this piece right here, I could sell for a hundred bucks. So I bid up to 50. I won the lot at 50. This, let me show you how it looks here. This is what's known as a bride's, bride's basket. I guess I got to put it where you guys can see it. A bride's basket. And this would normally go into a silver or silver plate holder, which would make it the basket part. But you can find and sell these pieces all on their own. And you can call it a bride's basket. They're very plain on the underneath. And that's because they would have set inside of a, a silver holder. Okay, Bride's basket. Now, I haven't discovered yet who done it on this. I suspect it's Fenton. Haven't verified that yet. It could be somebody else. One of the ways you do that is with this crimped edge. And this is crimped and ruffled. Crimped, and you can see it's actually this little fine extra ruffling in here is where they actually take it and they crimp. Now imagine this is hot glass they're working with and they've got to use a tool and go through and crimp and bend every little bit of this. Quite a bit of work. Um, each company that makes these crimped and ruffled bowls has a different style. And you can pretty much identify it with doing a little research and watching how this edge is made. Um, so watch that. Um, I'm, I'm not quite sure this is Fenton. This actually might be another Mount Washington or a Parapont piece because they both did this kind of glass. It is a white but it's not milk glass because, and I don't know, let's see, can you guys, not really. You can see through it. I can see right through out the window, older Victorian piece, really cool. Really cool. So I'm watching the chat here. Actually, this is crimped. These edges are crimped. Yep. And ruffled. They're both. The ruffle is the actual, the waves, the crimped is the extra within the ruffle. So it's crumpled, crumpled. It's crumpled. <laughs> or cruffled. It's cruffled. Okay, it's crimped and ruffled. $100 bill. Easy, right there. So what else did I get in that lot? Oh, and I'm breaking my own rule. Never pick up a glass basket by the handle. Have I told you guys that? Um, especially these older pieces, you can cause a stress fracture within the handle. So never, never pick them up. Never pick them up by the handle like I just did. This is another Fenton piece, unmarked, which means it's pre-1970s. They didn't start putting the mark on here until 1970. I think, and this is Silvercrest, exactly, Carol. I think Silvercrest was 50s. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but this basket came with it, and this is a $50 bill all day long. All day long, that's a $50 bill. Fenton, I believe, is the only company that made all the different crest lines. And what that means, and let me show you guys, this is called silver crest. Even though it's clear glass, clear on white, called silver crest. 
they, uh, there's, oh my gosh, there's tons of different crests. Um, they all have a different color, and they all have a specific name to them. And we're going to have a Fenton webinar. Did I mention that? Yeah. Fenton is very fascinating and fun. Uh, so there's another Fenton piece that was in there now. Let's see. Oh, I still got my auction label on the bottom. It's just going to block what I wanted to show you. I think this one has, nope, this is, this is pre-1970 as well. So no label, but this is definitely Fenton satin glass. And I don't know if that comes through. You guys can see it's opaque. Uh, it's very matte finish. Okay, it's not shiny at all. Um, it's got cool little flowers in the bottom. I haven't figured out what the pattern is yet. This isn't a real expensive piece. So these next three pieces are my gravy. These are just what I'm going to run at auction, use as lost leaders, bring people in. Um, so it's a Fenton blue satin bud vase vintage yada dee yada dee. Um, I will probably start the auction at $9.95. Bring in my Fenton buyers for the basket and possibly this other piece here. And we got this piece. Now this is a Mark Fenton piece. And it, the mark is really hard to see. Actually, you can see it better there than you can even in person. But you can see the oval mark. This is one of the first Fenton marks. It's the large 1970s mark. Um, this is Poppy is the, the pattern. It's got an iridescence. This shape, guys, no matter who makes it, this shape is called a rose bowl. A rose bowl. And they're very collectible. No matter who the maker is, there are rose bowl collectors, period. So, um, so this one's probably um, going to bring about $30 or $40, but I'm going to start it at $9.95. How do I know my Fenton glass? Um, Fenton really has like a look and a feel to it. Um, after you handle some pieces, you'll get to know Fenton. It's, it's not a very, very refined glass. Most of it is mold made. It's not hand blown. There are a few hand blown Fenton pieces, but for the most part, this was highly manufactured glass in specific patterns, specific colors, and specific shapes. So Fenton is one of the easiest glass out there to identify once you kind of learn those things. Yep. And from 1970 on, it was all marked. So. All right. This is an imperial glass piece. Also iridescent. It's got the grapes. And let's see if I can show you the imperial glass mark. Let's see if my camera will pick that up. You guys see that? Oh, yeah. Can kind of. It's an I and a G. It's an I and a G. So that one's pretty easy to see. This is not a pricey piece, but again, I've got enough keywords in this. Iridescent, imperial glass, grapes, uh, bowl, dessert cup. I'm not even sure what this, the purpose of this is. $9.95, $9.95 on auction just to pull people into my glass listing. Because I didn't buy the lot based on those pieces. Okay. So then I stopped by a thrift shop. <laughs> yes, I did. Yes, I did. Salvation Army, guys, a little tip on Salvation Army. If it's over two months old, they generally will give you a discount if you can get a manager. Now, the normal person at the counter won't do it. you got to get a manager who knows their little pricing codes, and they'll mark it down for you. So I just happened to stop by there the other day and found a few things that were of interest. Now, I bought these because of eye appeal and keywords. I know nothing about them yet, except that they're they're hand blown. Actually, what what would you call this shape? April and I were talking before the show, and I'm actually a little bit stumped <laughs> as to the shape of these. Normally, I would call them like a Pilsner glass, um, but something about them doesn't say Pilsner to me. I guess I could call them Pilsner or flute. Okay, I like flute better. Uh, they just seem more dainty than a Pilsner glass. But I guess that is the shape, huh? So they're iridescent, hand-blown, and they've got gold down here in these little... So they're, they're better than, you know, what they, they seem. A buck a piece. I asked for the markdown. They gave them to me for a buck a piece. Looks like Higgins glass. Thank you, Cindy. I'll start there. 
Okay, then they had... Now, these are nothing spectacular, but hey. All right, so this is not... In further investigating, I thought it was a Mary Gregory at first. It's not Mary Gregory, but it's in that style. And it's a hunter with a rabbit, and it's cranberry glass. And I believe this is stained, not flashed. Um, and it's a bowl. It would have had a lid. It's missing its lid. But it was 7 bucks, so I can run it on auction and bring people in with all those yummy keywords. Tumblr. Etched, stained, cranberry for a buck. Great loss leader. $9.95 on auction. It's going to bring people in. I have some other tumblers to get listed. It's going to bring them into those other listings. So I pick that up. I like dollar stuff. All right. This is one that I asked for a discount on. I bought this because of the keywords. Mainly, it's a maker that brings in shoppers. It is Spode. Now, this is uh, Edwardian Childhood. Not a huge, big seller, but I love the pattern personally. And it's got eye appeal. We'll make a good picture. And it's spode in a keyword. So that's going to bring people. Now, it was priced at 7 bucks, And that was a little high because it's not going to bring a whole ton of money. But I noticed that it was dated May 13. So I asked for the discount. They gave it to me. I got 25% off. And that's pretty much every Salvation Army I've been to. Now, this is within the boutique, Sally's Boutique area. You go in the Sally's Boutique where they keep the nicer stuff, they price it different, and they usually all have that, that discount code that they use. All right, we talked about mid-century, mid-century. I couldn't resist these glasses. Again, don't know who done them. I think they're Libby. They have got snowflakes on them, black faces, gold trim. Um, not marked, but I know, aren't they cool? I got four of them for six bucks. So, you know what? If they aren't worth anything, I'll keep them myself. But I knew they were mid-century, very mid-century. So, I have no problem with this. All right, real quick, I'm running over again. So, I bought these at auction. Oh, last week and I'm coming apart. Oops, hold on, guys. I'm destroying my stuff here as we speak. Uh, vintage. Oh, let's see if I can get the glare off of this. These type of dolls are known as Gofun. And I don't know if I'm saying that right. It's G-O-F-U-N. Gofun. I got two of them for about 25 for this one and 30 for another one. Really collectible. And this is one of those things that the prices are all over the place. I mean, they're from the very, very cheap, cheap. She's a very, very high price. Of course, you guys know, I'm going for the very, very high price. Let me get this one. This one's really cool because if I could find somebody who speaks Japanese, or reads Japanese, I could figure out the artist on this. She's got an artist marking in there. Sorry, guys, it is glaring off the glass. Artist sign, basically. So I need to figure out some Japanese and figure out who done it. But I figure these are 200 bucks a piece. 200 bucks a piece. Okay, I talked about this. I talked about this last week. I bought this guy on eye appeal at the end of the auction. Nobody wanted him. This cute little polar bear guy. And let's see. Where is it? There it is. He is signed. Double signed. Um, yeah, it's a print, but it's signed, and I believe it's numbered, too. No, it's not numbered. Just signed. Just signed. 1974. 1974. I bought this and two other prints for 15 bucks. But he's got eye appeal. Eye appeal. This is one of more of my scores. Let's see. Anybody recognize this artist? You guys know this style? Yes, Maxfield Parish. So anybody knows Maxfield Parish knows this is a good, good selling artist. You want to take a guess what I paid for this? You won't believe it. You just won't believe it. A little more than that, Ed. <laughs> 
Oh, dare I say, actually, I got two other pieces with this, with this. So three pieces in the lot. This was one of them. The other two are vintage also, but not as good as this. Close, Susan. 25 bucks. 25 bucks. And that's a $200 print. $200 print. So, yay, I had fun. I had fun. And I had a lot of fun at the auction today. In fact, I was just looking at my little, this is my sheet from today with all of my written down scores. So I have some fun stuff to show you next week again. See, that's why, you know, you guys know I do it all for you, right? I have to go to the auction so I have stuff to show you the next week. See, I can blame you. It's all your fault. <laughs> that works, doesn't it? That works. Oh my gosh, I got the cool, I won't be able to show these to you unless I take a picture and show you. I got two what are called dumbwaiter tables, kidney shaped, glass, display area, just gorgeous mahogany. What do you think I paid? They sold them each, which I was a little scared because I bid on the first one, a little more than that, Wendy. Let's, let me just tell you first that they're worth about $300 a piece. Now, what do you think I paid? Hundred bucks. Hundred bucks each. I, I was just like giddy. I won the first one for a hundred dollars, and I was just like sitting on pins and needles, going, "Oh my gosh, somebody could be really mean and bid me up on the second one." But I got them for my auctioneer. He's so awesome. <laughs> like I won the first one, and on the second one, you know, normally an auctioneer will kind of drag it out, try to find somebody to go up, you know, and. And he boomed down the hammer for me so that, that I got him. I was so excited because, yes, I'm going to list them, but I'm going to keep them for a while. <laughs> yes, 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 because I love them. I got a barrister bookcase, the old lawyer's bookcase with the, you know, the leaded glass top that folds in. $67.50. $67.50. I was like, what? I couldn't believe it. I know, really, huh? Yeah. Cool stuff. Who let them cows out? Moo! Moo!